much for coming. I cannot tell you how happy my heart is to see all of you in this room. This is the first time we have done an in-person Carla event in like three years. It's just like, it just makes me so happy to see all of you. And thank you so much for coming. For those of you who don't know me, I am Kate Paisani, and I am the director of Carla, which we are here to celebrate today. Um, so this is our kind of big kickoff for the year for our speaker series. So what we're gonna do today is talk a little bit about what Carla is, um, why we're celebrating today, because some of you may be wondering why we're having a celebration, um, and how you, can connect, how you can connect with us throughout the academic year. So let me just give you a little bit of an overview of the center. Let's make sure my slides are advancing. Click on the window. Oh, here we go. Okay, so CARLA is an acronym for the Center for Advanced Research on Language Acquisition. We are a small but mighty team of four individuals. So myself as the director, Karen Larson and the TL sweater over there is the executive assistant director. Marlene Johnsoy in the back. She's our tech guru and and Liz Hellebeck in the uh, purple t-shirt is our amazing admin. Um, so our mission is to improve language teaching and learning. We've been carrying out that mission since 1993, so almost for 30 years. I have not been at Carla since 1993, um, but various people have been carrying out this mission for the last 30 years or so. So we do things like conduct research on um, second language acquisition and teacher development. We create resources that support teachers in enacting various um, aspects of second language education. Those are mostly free, available for download on our website. And we offer professional development for teachers. So we do a speaker series, we do workshops, and we do a summer institute program every year. And many of you in the room I know have attended summer institutes in the past. Um, to be able to realize our mission, we are dependent on grant funding. And um, most of our funding comes from the U.S. Department of Education, specifically the Language Resource Center program in the Department of Education. And the reason that we are having this celebration today is because Carla just received grant funding from the Language Resource Center's program for the eighth time in the last 30 years. <laughs> this is the grant that floats our boat. So without this grant, there's no carbon approach. So, so we're really, really happy and relieved that we got it. So I want to tell you a little bit about the LRC program. Um, so as I mentioned, this is a grant program that's offered by the U.S. Department of Education, specifically by the branch that's called the International Foreign Language Education Service. And this is under the Title VI umbrella of the Higher Education Act. Um, so this is the grant funding that supports the NRCs that Global Studies have, it supports our center, it supports, uh, it's connected with the Fulbright Hayes program. Um, so the LRC program specifically funds grants to US universities to strengthen, to operate centers that improve the nation's capacity to teach and learn foreign languages. So Carla is very outward facing. We do a lot to support the community here at the U and the state of Minnesota, but we have a national mission. So we disseminate out to a national audience. Each grant cycle runs for four years. So Carla will be funded by this grant into 2026. Um, the grant just started in August. 16 centers are funded each grant cycle. And you can see on the map that the centers come from various places across the United States. We are really proud to be the only center in the upper Midwest. Um, I mean, Michigan State kind of upper Midwest, but you know, we're really. <laughs> <laughs> um, and each center has kind of its own flavor or focus, right? So some centers focus just on less commonly taught languages, some centers focus on um, literacy, some centers focus on community colleges, it kind of depends. And so for this grant cycle, we proposed projects in two focal areas that we felt really represent Carla's flavor, so to speak. 
So these two areas are, the first is language content integration. So we are gonna have support three initiatives in this area to be able to enhance the teaching and learning of languages through the study of cultural and academic content. We'll talk about each of these initiatives in just a moment. And then the second strand of initiatives that we have is um, teacher education and advocacy. So we'll be supporting four initiatives in this strand that enhance our ability to sort of self-promote, right? To hone our craft, to communicate with others, and so on and so forth. So we're gonna talk briefly about each of these seven initiatives. Some of the initiative leaders are here. So I'll be talking about some of them. We have some of the other initiative leaders here who will be talking about the initiatives that they're leading. So the first one is the Literacies and Language Education Project. Some of you may be familiar with this. This has been an ongoing project for the last four or five years. It's a project that I lead with Mandy Menke from the Department of Spanish and Portuguese Studies. And unfortunately, I can't read the slides. Oh, here we go. Oh, bigger. Um, so the purpose of this initiative is to support teachers who want to learn about and enact more literacy pedagogy. Um, and so we're going to be doing three main activities with this initiative. The first is to create a repository of instructional activities and enactment videos. We're gonna be partnering with the CLA language teacher to video record teachers who are enacting multiliteracies lessons. And then we'll post those on the Carvel website alongside the activities repository so that teachers can see how to put into practice um, these various activities. Um, we'll be publishing the repository this year and then the videos will be recorded over the next couple of years and posted in the fourth year of the grant. We'll be organizing workshops specifically for teachers of less commonly taught languages. Less commonly taught languages was a priority for this grant, so a lot of our projects and hopefully focus on those. Um, and we'll be disseminating various resources to support teachers in enacting multiliteracies pedagogy. Mandy and I are um, in the final stages of publishing a book with Georgetown University Press. And um, it's a practical guidebook for teachers on local literacy pedagogy. And Carla will be posting the companion website for that book. So we'll have a lot of resources that will be free. You don't have to buy the book to use the resources. Um, I just, I'm not making a plug for the book. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they'll be published as OERs. So you'll be able to download them and adapt them for, to meet your own needs. Um, so we're really excited about that project. Um, the next project under this um, language content integration strand focuses on dual language immersion at the secondary level. This project will be led by Corey Matthew, who is a recent graduate of the Second Language Education Program in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction. She's currently an assistant professor at the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. And she's going to be developing um, curricular units in Spanish in three content areas, social studies, language arts, and science that support dual language immersion educators at the secondary level. And at the same time that she's developing the materials, she's going to be conducting design-based research on how the materials were created and how teachers interact with the materials. And then she's also going to be offering workshops for immersion, secondary immersion educators specifically targeting folks from minority serving institutions because another priority for the grant was to support activities um, that reach out to folks at historically black colleges and universities at minority serving institutions and at community colleges. So we've incorporated that into several of our projects. Um, the next project um, under the language content integration strand is social justice and language education. So I'm gonna ask um, Lauren Goodspeed and Helena Roof to come up and talk about that. They are two of the co-leaders of that project. Hi, everyone. Um, so this social justice and language education initiative grows out of work that we've already been doing for the past two years with the social skills grant that we've had. Some of you are familiar with it, um, and that grant has been to develop specialized materials, um, specifically units and materials that support teachers in the creation of social justice units. Um, and so this is sort of expanding and continuing on that initiative. Um, the LRC grant is also going to support research activities that we've already begun, which is what I'll describe briefly, and then Pauline will talk about the professional development activities. Um, we'll uh, be sort of researching in two strands. So one of the strands that we've already begun is research on teachers 
and their abilities to enact social justice pedagogy in world language education, um, their cognition related to social justice pedagogy, as well as their identity construction and social justice pedagogy and um, that environment, I guess. Um, secondly, we're excited to start new research on students and the impact of social justice pedagogy on them in the classroom, um, including their knowledge and their dispositions. Yeah. <laughs> And we will also be offering a speech of professional development activity. And for this phase of the project, we really wanted to expand the professional development opportunities that we already had for our curriculum developers. In the first phase of the project, to really, as Kate said, expand it to all language instructors. Um, and in order to ascertain what types of professional development would be most useful, we did tell, we told, held a focus group with language instructors from underrepresented groups. And what we discovered was that teachers most need support in adapting existing materials to teach social justice topics using critical pedagogies. So to achieve this goal, we plan to hold a series of workshops, one every semester, that will focus in on various topics. For example, this October, we will be holding a workshop on disability in our world language classrooms, adapting mindsets and materials, and that will be the Tammy Burberry from the University of Minnesota Morris. And then each workshop, oh. uh, each workshop will be followed by a professional learning community meeting. And together we hope these two professional development, experience, professional development experiences will support the work of instructors by offering a series of interrelated professional development that helps teachers learn strategies for teaching languages for social justice lens and encourages them to share and adapt materials um, with each other. We will also create additional resources to facilitate this work and to connect the theory and the practice. For example, we hope to make a crosswalk of the critical pedagogies underlying this initiative to write some reflective questions and tips for adapting existing materials that will be based on the content of the workshops, um, to have example instructional activities that center social justice. And finally, what I'm really excited about is to present teacher testimonials in the form of a podcast that we will produce um, together with the We Teach Languages podcast, which is organized by Stacey Margarita Johnson and Vanderbilt. So we're really excited about all of these opportunities coming up. Yeah, thank you. So moving on to the teacher education and advocacy strand of our LRC, I'm going to ask Kendall King to come up and talk about the first initiative, which is on equity and access to state seals of literacy. Hi, everybody. <laughs> You're an excited to all be in this room. So I'm guessing most people know what seals of literacy are in this room. Right? These are it's a credential that high school students can be awarded in Minnesota and in most states. These have been around for a decade or so. Um, most states now offer them. But one of the things that's become increasingly clear is that access to these seals is inequitable and biased towards larger, well-resourced school districts and towards more commonly taught students languages like Spanish. Um, you might be aware, or might be not, I was a little bit surprised, um, that only 14% of districts in our state offer the seal. So we have about 335 districts, only about 14% offer the seal, um, are able to offer it. So a little bit differently, about a third of our state lives, a third of our state students live in rural areas. Um, but rural students only count for 4% of the locals. So this project that I'm working on with Ayumi Stockman of MDE um, seeks to address some of these gaps um, and to support in particular rural districts, heritage language students, and students who are, who are uh, little, uh learners and speakers. Um, so there's sort of four big buckets of activities. We're starting this year with the needs analysis, both locally, statewide, and then nationally. And then over the coming four years, we'll be developing um, toolkits for parents, students, and employers. Um, and the idea is that these are multilingual materials that districts, teachers, administrators can download for free um, and adapt to their context to promote multilingual 
Buddhism and language learning. Um, we also are developing assessment supports. Uh, we can't, we don't really have the budget to do full sample tests, but descriptors of the test in um, widely spoken languages in the state, and also test sample items. The kids are not shocked when they go in to take the test, have a sense of what uh, the test looks like. And then the fourth priority is um, to provide, I think it's up there, but we'll also be providing curricular support and teacher training and development um, with respect to setting up these programs to developing curricula, curriculum that can help students uh, reach those target levels. Uh, so we'll be working across those four areas and putting everything up for free, downloadable, customizable. Um, and really, you know, the driving thought behind this is we've got more than 300 districts. Everybody doesn't have to kind of reinvent the wheel into it as well. We have a lot of capacity in the state, um, and we hope this funding will help us um, share that and both in our state and nationally. Thank you. Okay, so the second uh, initiative in the teacher education and advocacy strand is the International Language Teacher Education Conference. I know many of the people in this room have attended that conference and presented at that conference. The last time we offered it was in 2019, and then, you know, everything went crazy. Um, and so our, our partner at um, another LRC at Georgia State University was supposed to host the conference in 2021. Typically it's offered every other year, but because of the pandemic, they weren't able to do it. So we are really thrilled to be able to offer it again in 2024. Um, sorry, I didn't slide it. Um, so we'll be hosting it here at the University of Minnesota campus in 2024. In 2026, our partner, Pearl, at the University of Maryland will be hosting the conference, so we'll be helping them out with that. Um, we'll also be publishing the conference proceedings as a card of a working paper. And when we host the conference, we'll be having some special symposia that highlight the work of language teacher educators um, of, of littles and also those who are working at historically black colleges and universities, at minority-serving institutions, and at community colleges. We'll be offering scholarships for those folks as well. Um, the third initiative under teacher education and advocacy is the Language Program Direction Project. This is a, another project that's a continuation of something that Carla's been doing for the past several years. So if you're a DLI or a coordinator, um, you may be familiar with this project. We've been publishing interactive web-based modules on various topics in language program direction. For this grant cycle, we're going to publish eight new modules. And the topics are directing little programs, so again, focus on what's commonly taught languages, building relationships and navigating hierarchies, the pre-semester orientation, teaching beyond the lower level language sequence, evaluating language teachers, OERs and language program direction, selecting and adapting the textbook, and the emotional labor of language program direction. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so this is, this is a, um, like I said, an ongoing project. These modules are published as OERs on the CARLA website. Um, we're also going to be partnering with CIRCLE at the University of Arizona to support the professional learning community around the modules. And CARLA will continue to support the publication of Second Language Research and Practice, which is the open access journal of the American Association of University Supervisors and Coordinators that's focused on language education at the post-secondary level. And then our final initiative is language program evaluation. And we're really excited about this initiative because we are partnering with ACTFL to carry out this initiative. So Meg Malone and Celia Zamora, who are um, ACTFL employees, will be um, carrying out this initiative. We'll be offering annual summer institutes on program evaluation to specific audiences, including teachers of littles, teachers of heritage languages, um, teachers at minority serving institutions. So again, there's sort of running themes that are going through our projects. They're also going to be creating lots of resources that will be published on both the CARLA website and the ACTFL website and offering other professional development around language program evaluation. And this will be spanning the K-16 spectrum. So um, you maybe have picked up on the fact that some of our projects are specific to K-12 education, some are specific to post-secondary, this one has covered all the 
So that's kind of the LRC in a nutshell. We also wanted to just mention a few other opportunities for engaging with Carla for folks here at the University of Minnesota. So the first is the Carla presentation series. This is the kickoff of that presentation series. Um, we have talks every two to three weeks um, featuring folks here on our campus. So the next one is on September 8th, 8th of the 28th and features some colleagues from the Second Language Education Program. There's a flyer in the back that has our whole speaker series for the semester on there. We also offer workshops for teachers. Some of them are Saturday morning workshops for a fee, a very small fee. Um, we are also offering a free social justice workshop, the one that Helena mentioned on disability and social justice on October 14th. And there's also information about that at the back of the room. Um, we offer um, the Carla Fellows Program. So if you're an advanced graduate student in a PhD program, um, you're eligible to apply for this. this um, you can get $1,000 to help support conference attendance. Um, and we have a flyer in the back of the office, right, Karen? Yeah. And we'll be announcing the competition in our next um, Carlisle Summit, our electronic newsletter. Um, we also have a competition for summer graduate research assistantships. So this is an opportunity for faculty to apply for funding to support a graduate student. When I say faculty, I mean tenure stream and non-tenure stream faculty. So PA instructors can apply for this too. Um, so uh, it's to support a graduate student who can help you with your own research as a faculty member, or you can mentor a graduate student who's conducting their own research. Um, so we'll be announcing that competition in the spring. And then finally, we have a partnership with the CLA Language Center to offer scholarships for our Summer Institute program to graduate student and p and instructors to be able to attend Carl Summer Institutes for a very small fee, um, but most of the fees for attendance are waived. So we're really happy to be able to offer these opportunities to support you all and our community here. Um, I want to end just by a uh, thank you. Um, so I mentioned that we are four people and you met some of the folks who are leading initiatives, but to put together a grant like the one that we just received takes an army of people. I'm not going to read all of the names or all the different organizations that supported us as we were preparing this grant application, but we received an enormous amount of financial, intellectual, administrative, and moral support from the folks who are listed on the slide. So we're really grateful to all of them. And we are grateful to you. We are so glad to have this amazing community of language educators. We're so glad to have you here in person. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. You're also welcome to help yourselves to more food. We hope you'll socialize and stick around for a little while. And just thank you all for coming. And we look forward to seeing you at Carlo events throughout the semester.